On today's Kickstarter critique, we check out Bard Song, which looks like a really generic dungeon miniatures game. But man, did they nail it with this Kickstarter page. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter every single day and give you my honest thoughts on it. But I don't do it every single day, so I don't know why I said that. But today we're going to be checking out Bard Sung. Inspire songs and live your legend in this co whoa, cooperative dungeon explorer? What? With minis? A cooperative dungeon explorer with minis? I don't think that's been done yet. I don't. Th I think this is a totally new idea. I bet it's gonna have a giant mini. Let's check it out. So it's made three hundred and thirty-four thousand bucks. It's got thirteen days to go. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into here. Being quite frank here, the video did nothing for me. Nothing really stood out. Nothing made me say, wow, this is going to be totally different from all those other, at this point, literally almost hundreds. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's probably been at least a hundred of these where it's just some oversized generic box filled with minis. It's cooperative. You play solo and I bet it's going to have a giant mini. And But what is it doing spectacular that's gotten to 330, 334,000? So let's check it out. Age is 14 plus, 45 to 90 minutes, 1 to 5 players. That all sounds pretty, pretty generic. Why back now? Okay, here's the meat and potatoes. Let's see. Back the hero pledge to save $51 on the core box. That's a lot of money. All unlocked and future quest goals are Kickstarter exclusive. Asterix. The only exception is the game's tray insert because it's featured in the core box. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. FOBO, what is it, FOBO or FOMO? Fear of missing out. When you live long enough to become a legend, when you face blah, blah, blah. Legends are heroes who have adventures worth singing about. In a world where being sung by bards is the mark of a true hero, you begin with a single tile of destination and the desire to become song-worthy. Hmm. A single tile, a destination. Okay, so that, that kind of intrigued me a little bit more. And there was one particular part in the video that I was like, okay, I appreciate the honesty and the upfrontness of it, which was, it pretty much said, this is just a moving puzzle. Just try and figure it out. And this is, you know, I'm sure it's going to have a lot of combat and stuff like that, but moving puzzle, I feel like that's a mechanism that we really need to start being more upfront about because a lot of people love moving puzzles. All right, inspired by dungeon crawling and role-playing classic, Bard Sung is a cooperative dungeon explorer for one to five players. We got the cool moving pictures. Oh, look, hey, it's more minis. Inspire the song. That's the big one. Descend to the depths of an ancient four. Build your dungeon and create your legend as you explore. What does build your dungeon mean? That, that one actually does kind of intrigue me. I'm assuming it just means that it's going to be randomly generated, but, but uh, I'm intrigued. Live your legend from your path through the dungeon to the growth of your character into a fabled hero. The decisions you make and directions you take will evolve your story. Okay. Okay. 
Now I have some genuine interest. Face the looming darkness together. Cool minis. We we get it. We get it. Wow, a hero pledge, ninety nine bucks. Okay, there you go. I'm going to say, you know, normally I say I'm looking for red flags. That's a green flag. I see that as being one of the main reasons why this is so big because it doesn't seem insanely expensive to jump into it. 75 euros, $99, that's something I can swallow. Once you start getting to the 150, the 200, that's where it's like, eh, really? Okay. With multiple potential paths through the depths, you can always return to take a different route. Play through again and again, hero. The Ancient Forge is a warrant of secrets. All right, so what do we got? What do we got? You got the big mini. Yeah, you don't expect a big old mini like that at the $99 pledge level. Hmm. Plus the Kickstarter exclusive Hero Glade Strider. Yeah, I got to get that guy. Plus the Kickstarter exclusive Wandering Monster Oni. I wish I could actually see the size of these. Plus all the completed quest goals, and I bet you, here's my guess. I'm going to guess that they banged this out, that their stretch goals are very well done, very clean, very clear, and very enticing. That's what I'm going to predict right now, because honestly, nothing I see here is sh is shouting, you know, $300,000, but I'm going to guess these stretch goals are doing it. So Swift Claw, I, oh, oh, okay, I like how they did this. They highlighted in yellow the Kickstarter exclusive. Oh, wait, are those the heroes or are those the Kickstarter exclusive things? Okay, those are just the heroes. Never mind. I take that back. I take back my compliment. Our adventure begins here. So these are things that we've unlocked. Effervescent Ooze, Damon Blade, Wolf Pack, plus all completed daily unlocks. Your daily reward for braving the dungeon. I hate these on a personal level, but I suppose if I was actually backing this Kickstarter, this would be something I'd be very excited about every day. So I think that just... Oh, 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 there you go. You got that Gygax name. There's your green flag for you. That's, yeah, that's big. So Gary Gygax is the creator of Dungeons & Dragons. You have anyone with the name Gygax attached to a project, and instantly you are going to get curiosity and interest from a lot of different spots on the internet, and there you go. That was smart of them. Our adventure begins here. What is this? Quest... Oh, guest collaborators. Yep, there you go. So each one of these people has their own... You And they highlighted the Gary Guy guest there. Each one of these people has their own unique audience that they are going to share this with. And that's really smart on their part. Like, it's super duper smart on their part. Because let's be honest, game-wise, nothing about this game is like saying, Whoa, this is different enough from X, Y, and Z oversized mini cooperative dungeon game. But when you start cross-promoting, that's when you get these big numbers. Add-on marketplace, don't care, don't care, neoprene mat. Oh, there's not many add-ons. But there's more coming. Look at that. They put the little... Okay, whatever. How to choose your add-ons. That's nice. I like this. This is nice, you know? Because here's the thing. I say some things about Kickstarter. Like when I see someone say, this is how you're back the Kickstarter. I say, really? I feel like everyone at this point, if you're looking at a hobby game, knows that. But actually utilizing the pledge manager, I still think it's one of those things where a lot of people do it, but not everybody's, you know, jumped into that for one reason or the other. So it's nice that they have a little guide there. Note that anything, blah, Bard Song is a game of pathways. Show me the videos. Show me the videos. Level up your hero your way. This is cool. Cool, cool, cool. Exploration. There we go, because dungeons are procedurally generated. Yep, there it is. So they're randomly generated. Okay, that, that takes back some of the excitement from me when it said, create your own dungeon. So it's like, you're not creating your own dungeon. It's just dungeons are going to create themselves. All right, whatever. So that, that diminished the excitement a little bit. Enemy behaviors, cool. Simple AI, I like that. Marching order, I do like that. I think that's a really cool mechanism. Yeah, nothing about this is really screaming $300,000 to me. I understand why it got to $300,000 because you got all these different different kind of groups coming together on one particular game and creating excitement. And especially, you know, think about it like this. So if Gary Gygax is, I don't know if that's his son, his nephew, whoever it is, is posting and talking about this board game that has RPG elements. It's got a bunch of RPG writers on it. It's got, they say, 50-hour story, cooperative. You know, that's going to draw in a whole unique group of people. And those whole unique group of people who might not normally be backing Kickstarters like this are then going to be sharing that with their friend and say, oh, there's a daily thing they're unlocking and we can get this new mini and blah, blah, blah. And, and they're doing a great job on the PR game. And that's what I'm going to give them credit for. On the game itself, meh. But on the PR, nailing it. 
absolutely nailing it. Rule booklet. Uh, yeah, let me click on a rule booklet. I was looking at one a couple days ago. It was from Indie Board and Cards. Oh my god, it was so bad. Such a bad one from Indie Board and Cards. The one they have on right now, crack the code. There's no video. They're like, somebody asked for a rule booklet, and they're like, well, we don't want to give you the rule booklet because it might spoil the campaign. It's like, really? I want to see the rule booklet. Video, who do we got? Let's play Bard Sun. Don't know. Okay. We got enough videos. Four videos, then you got one from Steamforge. That looks good. What's in the box? Here we go. This is what we want to see. This is what we see. <gasps> game mat. I love when game mats. Rule book, an adventure book. Yeah. I like how you start off with that. I, I think that really, that really tells me about who they're going for here. They start off game mat, rule book, and adventure book. You know, I, I feel like they're, they're going for more of an RPG crowd here than necessarily a board game crowd. Ten dice. Five hero miniatures. Yeah, so they're not even starting with the minis. 895 cards. Wow, that's a lot of cards. <laughs> 29 tiles. So that's for the dungeons, whatever. Tokens. 61 enemies. Yeah, lots of minis. Cool, whatever. Meet the team. Don't care. Quest goals. Here we go. Bro, Oni, you have encountered... So this is just they unlocked it 48 hours. Game trays at 100,000, 130. Yep, this is what I was talking about. I told you, I bet they were going to be banging these stretch goals really well. And they have them at pretty, you know, 160 to $186,000. It sounds like a lot, but for a campaign like this, it's probably going to end with like 500 to a million, 500,000 to a million dollars. You know, 26,000. Like if they're giving something extra away every 26 or 30,000 bucks, that gets people excited. That means I want to check the Kickstarter page actively every few days to see oh what did i get oh i got this cool oh i got the wolf pack oh, oh but we're also we're uh, we're uh, lock the door and your hero is knocking unlock the door did, did, aren't they already two hundred fifty eight thousand? i don't know anywho it i see what they're doing here i think they did oh so let's check out the shipping to the united kingdom usa manland 18 to 26 that's weird why does it have two like what why does it cost different to ship anywhere into the mainland huh that's that's a little confusing but anywho what do they got kickstarter ends pledge manager live pledge manager closes shipping commences let's take a look at over here 75 bucks nice clean clear 3297 wow that's it that's it that and a pledge manager okay there you go that's exactly there's a lot they're doing good here Gameplay wise, once again, I say nothing here screams three hundred thousand dollars. I think a lot of companies would have put this out and would have squeaked along to say fifty to one hundred thousand bucks, and it would have done well. But I love a lot of the things they did. It is so clean and clear over here on this hero pledge. Do I want the game? I click on that. I buy the game. I don't think about it anymore, and I come back every once in a while and check out all the cool minis that I've unlocked. Okay. And then once you get to the pledge manager, then it's like, oh, you can, and that's that's also a great thing that they show you how to use the pledge manager. You can get the extra stuff, and there's not too much extra stuff. It's a very clean and clear Kickstarter. It's got lots of cross-brand promotion, and overall, I think they're doing a great job with this. I would say this is a spectacularly run Kickstarter page, despite the fact the game itself, meh, meh. But everything around the game, I think they did a great job on. So there you go. That is today's Kickstarter critique for Bardsung. Another generic dungeon game, but they did everything else around the generic dungeon game very, very well. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Also, if you're interested in having a Kickstarter game critique, post it down below and hopefully I'll get to it. Also, if you want to guarantee it happens or if you are a game designer and you want your Kickstarter done, be sure to check out that fiber link down below. It's five bucks. It's money back guarantee too. So if you don't like it, you're like, man, I hate your video. You were too honest. Then you just, I'll just give you five bucks back. It will be good. And you get free promotion. Look at that. Scam me. Don't, well, don't actually scam me because I need the five bucks. But uh, you know what I'm saying here. Anywho, bye.